If you wanna find me, yeah, I'm in the front row With my two tickets, on me, I'm in the front row The best place to be, yeah, I'm in the front row What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the In the Front Row YouTube channel. We are excited for another episode of Double Trouble. Before we get started, go ahead and subscribe down yeah, below. Oh, so you can. Yeah. Is this right? right? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and hit that subscribe <laughs> button for us and follow us at In the Front Row LA mm -hmm. to follow along what we have going on. Today's episode is special because. The world is talking about the NFL draft yeah. that happened last night. And or we, the Wizards being the Lakers. I mean, so, I think the more the world uh, is talking about the NFL draft right. that happened last night, the NBA playoffs, <laughs> we will get to yeah. soon because they are very close. But mm -hmm. let's, we're going to stick to the NFL for today's episode. And the first two picks of the draft were well, I guess, known. A lot yeah. of people expected Lawrence and Wilson to go one, two. But the draft really opened up at number three. And the San Francisco 49ers who traded – up to the number three spot really mm -hmm. shocked the world when they picked Trey Lance at the number three spot. It was interesting. It, the consensus seemed to be Mac yeah. Jones up to a few days, and then they were back mm -hmm. and forth, and they made a decision, I believe, the morning of the draft. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to the 49ers going with the quarterback that they say is the smartest quarterback in the draft? Yeah, um, I like it. I don't love it. It was, like, okay to me. It shocked me. We were sitting there. I was like, oh, it did take me back because – I thought it was Mac Jones all the way. But you got to realize, San Fran traded three first-round picks and a third-round pick uh, to go move up. So they better like their guy. Obviously, that's a lot of draft capital. Um, I like Trey Lance. I had him ranked third if I ranked the top five quarterbacks. I had him behind uh, Trevor Lawrence, obviously. And I had him behind Justin Fields. I thought Justin Fields was the better selection. I like it if you put him in a really good offense around, you know, a really good system with some good play calling. That's where he's going. So I think he's going to pan out well in the NFL because he's, a, he's not a quarterback that's going to overcome everything. He's just going to be – well, he has the potential to be right away, obviously. He's like 20 years old, not many college starts, not many, like, against great competition either. So he's going to have some time or have to, you know, develop over time as a project. So I like it because where he's going, um, I didn't have him ranked that high uh, or ahead of Justin Fields. I thought Justin Fields was the better selection. but I like it just because, like, like I said, the, where he's going. So I think he'll have a good career because he's around Kyle Shanahan, and Kyle Shanahan can make things happen. He can. We've seen him elevate quarterbacks play. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how San Francisco moves forward. Now the consensus yeah. is they're going to keep Jimmy G in the – They're going to trade him. Or, well, the, maybe for a year for a try line for Patrick Mahomes came in the NFL – and mm -hmm. sat for a year and then played yeah. his second season. So I think it might be – obviously, it's going to be one of those deals. I don't think Lance is going to be the day one starter. No. But may, they see potential. He, people mm -hmm. say he has the highest glass ceiling in the draft. We see, will, I don't think he does. I think Justin Fields does. We will <laughs> see – or the most to prove, I guess, no, in that way. No, I, I know yeah. what scouts are saying. I'm saying yeah, me personally. The potential in the draft. Yeah. You get to the number four pick. Atlanta picks Kyle Pitts. You said that was coming all along. So. Yeah. Let's, I guess, go a more interesting route, obviously. Well, what's your opinion on Trey Lance? What do you think of the pick? You can't just go on and not say your opinion. I'm more of the host of the show. No, I think, <laughs> oh, I'm the expert? Oh, no, we're in trouble. No, I think <laughs> – I, actually, I do like the pick because mm -hmm. I think you have a stable quarterback right now who can play and win mm -hmm. you football games. We've seen Jimmy G in San Francisco continuously win games when he's on the field, get them to the Super Bowl, get them deep in the playoffs. I think Trey Lance can learn a lot from him if mm -hmm. they both go in with the right mindset. And I think maybe two or three years down the road, he will develop and he will be ready to start mm -hmm. and be a starter. And the NFL, I don't think he's going to be a boss, if that's what you're asking. I think it's just going to take a longer developing he's process. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, we want to get to every pick, but it, obviously, it's going <laughs> yeah. to be a three-hour show. Yeah. So maybe I'll ask you, yeah. what was kind of one storyline besides, obviously, the Trey Lance that shocked mm -hmm. the world? There was a lot of picks that really yeah. didn't seem to go the way that people were expecting. Maybe one pick that stuck out for you that was like, oh, my God, like, that really shocked uh, me. I had two of them, actually. Uh, the first one was Denver passing up on Justin Fields. Um, all heard all morning. Denver must have a deal for Aaron Rodgers. They yeah. must be ready to go. <laughs> a deal in principle because you passed up on Justin Fields. And if you like Max Jones, I don't like Max Jones as much. I would rank him fifth out of the quarterbacks. But if you like him. And Justin Fields, who I think will be the best quarterback in the draft, even over Trevor Lawrence. I've said mm -hmm. that before. Not a popular opinion, just my opinion. I really like Justin Fields. So if you're passing up on, to me, the top quarterback in the draft, sitting right in your lap at nine, you must have a deal with it, ready to go that's bringing Aaron Rodgers 
uh, to Denver because I don't know where else you could go passing up on a quarterback. And I know Vic Fangio is a defensive guy mm-hmm. and he drafted Patrick Sertan. I understand the pick, but quarterbacks win in the league and they still have to understand that in Denver. So uh, they must know something that the public doesn't know. And obviously because Aaron Rodgers coming out saying he won't play for the team in yeah. 2021, the GM obviously came out and said that he will, like they're not trading Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers seems like a pretty stubborn guy. So I'm going <laughs> to take yeah. the side of Aaron Rodgers. So, I don't know. There's something fishy there with Denver and Green Bay that they would pass up on two young prospects just to get a corner. I don't I guess we'll see. That was my first one. The second one, just like really quick, I just have to point this out. What are the Raiders doing? <laughs> like, what? like every year they come in with these surprise picks that like Leatherwood, who they picked, was touted or like graded as a second to third mm-hmm. round pick, like a second day guy. And they, they went up and got him. I don't. I want to know what goes on in John Gruden and Mike Mayock's head because it's just interesting with the picks they make. But yeah, yeah, those would be my two storylines. <laughs> I guess I had I do a few storylines. Mm. I guess of the draft. I think the number five pick in Cincinnati, then bringing Jamar Chase into Cincinnati to play with his former college teammate and Joe Burrow. You know how much of a big fan, even though I'm a Ravens fan, how much I love Joe Burrow and his, his, his potential. I think, or he to develop in this league. Mm. I think. You know, if he didn't get hurt last year, I mean, they wouldn't have done anything. I don't know what I'm saying. Now, I did lose I, a bet when they lost the Titans. I, I or when they beat you, the Titans. Yeah, I told you they're going to beat the Titans. Joe, yeah. Joe Burrow don't mess around. Yeah. I think <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. We saw them dominate the college ranks, but that's obviously it's a different league. In the NFL, the Bengals going with a weapon over protection. I think we'll see how yeah. that lasts in the future. Yeah, so what, was sitting there. Yeah, what they do. I guess in the future rounds of the draft, maybe to get because mm-hmm. they need some protection in Cincinnati. I thought that was a risk pick. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying Jamar Chase is a risk. I'm saying I thought it was more yeah. of a risk pick to be like, oh, we're going to go get a more offensive mm-hmm. weapon instead of protection that rhymes. But anyway, I think, you. I, I, think bars. Yeah, I think my number two thing, I'm going to sip some coffee for this one because. Oh, no. I'm scared. Uh-uh. Is it that bad? No, I think you already mentioned it, but I think um, oh. Justin Fields going at 11 is last for me to me and I think mm-hmm. he should have been right Steve I thought Knight. he should have been <laughs> I thought he should have been the first pick in the draft but obviously that was not mm-hmm. a consensus I thought he was the best quarterback and uh, I don't understand how you go from being the second best quarterback after the season ends to being drafted that low and all these quarterbacks three quarterbacks mm-hmm. going above you um we expected three quarterbacks in the top three picks mm-hmm. and you weren't one of them was interesting to me I think yeah. Justin Fields when it all comes and set and done the Chicago Bears finally have a quarterback that they've been looking for for the past Mm -hmm. I don't know how many years um but I think that yeah I think they yeah they finally have a quarterback who can play who is going to develop and who is going Mm -hmm. to play that's the position they've been seeking for and mark my words when this draft let's say four or five years down the road Justin Fields will be the best quarterback out of this draft I agree well apparently he's not starting day one if you listen to Ryan Pace well just saying I don't agree with him that's also a person that never mind we won't get into that but I think that's saying what he said (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think that's another uh, – Justin Fields will be the best quarterback in this draft is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Hey, didn't Patrick Mahomes go 11? He went 10. 10. Or no. Oh. Yeah, he went 10. Did he go 10? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, who went 11? I don't know. I can't remember is who Sean Watson went 12, I think. Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. I was going to say the lucky number, but I'm totally wrong. Yeah. Hey, it is a, 11 is known to be He's a, not Patrick Mahomes. No, a lucky no, number. I, okay, I'm not going to say – that is a no. big shoes to fill over Patrick Mahomes' mm-hmm. first few seasons, obviously. But it's I think Chuck, he is in a system where I think the Bears, they maybe need one more offer. They need a weapon who obviously can they need be that number line. one receiver. They need they need fix, but their defense is oh, yeah. stacked. They just need to fix a few offensive issues. And I think they're right there. I mean, we've seen them get to the playoffs in the past few seasons. I don't think it's a disaster organization to go I mean, they to. They were a playoff team last year. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's a disaster organization. Mm-hmm. There are a few pieces away from yeah. possibly getting to – the NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl. Well, I said a few pieces away. No, but I think I, I, it's interesting to me, but bringing Justin Fields in, mm-hmm. well, that's also interesting. You look at he struggled against the Blitz in college. If they don't have an offensive mm-hmm. line, he's going to get pressured a little bit more. We'll see how mm-hmm. – well, if he is the day one starter, we'll see how Apparently not. he reacts. I think he should. Put Justin Fields on the field. Mm-hmm. That man will be good. Those are my two main storylines. Yeah. Another storyline of the draft that everyone is talking about that I guess we will get to is – Bill Belichick, his luck is right again. Mac Jones falls to number 15. Remember, mm-hmm. at one point, Mac Jones was projected to be the number three pick in the NFL never draft to the San Francisco 49ers. I never believe that. Okay. Well, I'm just yeah. saying, if you look at mock drafts, I'm no, just yeah. saying Mac Jones was projected to be the number three pick. Mm-hmm. He f- Fields fell to 11. He falls to number 15 yeah. in the draft. Bill Belichick sitting right there. Yeah. 
didn't have to trade. Aren't you nervous during the draft if you're Bill Belichick? Like, oh, is he going to go? Is he going to go? No. Maybe he knew something, obviously, that we didn't. Mm-hmm. Your reaction? Uh, I mean, it, it's normal. Uh, New England in the NFL. Uh, Bill got what he wanted. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of Mac Jones. I know people say he processes things fast and his cerebral, you know, thinking to the game is amazing. I just think he's the fifth. I would rank him fifth, like, honestly, pretty – underneath everybody else, mm-hmm. like, pretty far behind. Um, I think him and Trey Lance – I think it's, like, the top – honestly, two. I think it's Lawrence and Fields. And then Trey Lance is kind of, like, by himself, and then I think it um, turns into Zach Wilson, who I think is a little overrated. I don't know, I don't really see the hype over that. And also, I think Mac Jones is, like, right there with him. I, I mean, I guess he is in New England, but those are – I don't – it's like watching the Bulls. It's like Michael Jordan <laughs> obviously dominated the 90s. Mm-hmm. To me, he's the second best to ever do it, but we can have that discussion later. Um, but still, like, he dominated an era, and then you're just trying to find the next guy. And I just think to try to come in and replace Tom Brady, you're just never going to be what Tom Brady was and, like, what he did in Foxborough. So I just think it's, it's, it's a lot, man. And if he has the, you know, swagger and, you know, the mindset to do it, I give him credit. I just think it's really, really tough to come in. I think the expectations are – I know he played at Alabama, but he played at Alabama. And, like, Dominique Foxworth, and I'll get, uh, I thought it was hilarious. He said this morning, he played with better wide receivers on his college team than he's going to go to in the NFL. Uh-huh. So I just think that's crazy to think about. I think about two first-rounders with Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle. Yeah. He had better weapons. Top 10. Yeah, he had better yeah. weapons. And Najee Harris, who I was going to the back end. Yeah. He had better weapons in college on his offensive team than he does now. So I just – I don't know. Uh, apparently, Cam Newton's still their starter. That's what also um, Bill Belichick said. He said Cam's our quarterback. So, I I mean, I don't know. I'm just not – I like the pick. I like the fit. I'm just not a big Mac isn't Jones it, guy. Isn't it interesting to think a lot of these quarterbacks going in, a lot of the GMs and coaches saying that mm-hmm. they will not start day one in a draft that yeah. was primarily based on quarterbacks. We, could, mm-hmm. we were projecting maybe the first four picks to be yeah. quarterbacks. Obviously, Atlanta broke that with drafting oh, Kyle I knew Pitts. That was, I knew that was coming. But I think – no, I'm saying it's just like mm-hmm. a quarterback-heavy draft. and. Mm-hmm. People, you know, there's still some quarterbacks out there, and people may be like, oh, maybe these guys aren't going to be day one starters. Obviously, yeah. I mean, Urban Meyer yeah. said he wouldn't put Trevor Lawrence in if the situation wasn't right. He doesn't want to ruin his career. I hope he's, day one he's seen that before. Question. Do I believe that? No. Not really. But I'm just saying all Gardner these – Gardner Minshew? No, I'm just saying all these <laughs> – Justin Fields, Ryan Pace coming out and saying yeah. it, Mac Jones, apparently yeah. not. Trey Lance, obviously, we know probably won't be the day one mm-hmm. starter. Um, Zach Wilson probably, yeah, I'm assuming, will he be. Will, but now, yeah. that, now that I'm just trading Sam Darnold away. But I, mm-hmm. it's interesting to me – I mean – Bill Belichick probably knew something that we didn't not to trade up and sitting there. If you, hey, if you don't have to give anything away and you get the quarterback that I think yeah. he wanted, it's going to be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you got to see Cam Newton was injured through most of last year. Yeah. So I know they, you know, need to improve on the receiving core. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how Mac Jones comes in. He, you know, completed over 77% of his passes yeah. in college. So he's kind of definitely nice. an accuracy type of guy. I think he'll, yeah. I think he'll be like a – I think he'll be okay. I'm Around not be like bad. a 10 to 15 quarterback in the yeah. NFL. I don't think I he's think gonna, always going to be like average to a little below I average. I think he's going to be an average quarterback in the NFL. He'll come in and, but honestly, if you're in a system like New England, you really have to be like, I mean, they had to go for 20 years. But do you think, do you think, yeah, but Bill Belichick knows how to put pieces in. He, even last year, we saw them contend in some games that people were like, oh, they shouldn't contend in. He's always going to be there if Bill Belichick is there. They're always yeah. going to put a competitive team on the field. He's not going to need to be Tom Brady. And no, I think – so I think he's just going to have to come in and play mm-hmm. his role. Any other storylines maybe on the draft that you thought were – before we wrap this up, anything that you really want to point out? Uh, I, mean, I know we talked heavily about the quarterbacks. Maybe we can yeah. discuss some other positions. Yeah, there were a lot of interesting picks. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting day. I like the Jets going up and trading up uh, to get the guard from USC. I thought that was really mm-hmm. – I think Joe Douglas, Joe Douglas is doing a really good job as the GM there. So I, I think Zach Wilson's going to be – Better than New York media. Is. Well, I think Zach Wilson's going to be better than – um, mm-hmm. and he, I don't want to say better than he looks, but he's going to have a lot of round I think Joe Douglas is doing a really good job of bringing pieces in, and people are judging Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold never had that. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't have a good GM. He had one of the worst coaches ever to take a head coaching position. So I just – yeah, so I just think Zach Wilson's going to actually look pretty decent just because of what Joe Douglas is doing around him. Um, what about the Ravens pick? You like, uh, do you like Rashad Bateman? I do. I was going to sound off on this on the end. Yeah. But I, I – yeah, I do. I guess, I guess we'll get into it. Before we get into it, I want to say Detroit's reaction to their pick was <laughs> something else. Um, and they act like they won the lottery, didn't they? Um, but I think I don't know why they think Jared Goff's it. He <laughs> sat there and watched him in LA. I mean, so you get rid of. I mean, Goff's on the field more than Matt Stafford is. Maybe. Yeah, but they don't. Have, they don't have Marvin Jones or or Goff. Yeah, they don't have to do it. Like, where, well, they yeah, drafted. They drafted a lineman. 
Oh yeah, maybe I got my picks mixed up. Yeah. Um, but I think they drafted Penny Sewell. Oh yeah, they did. That reaction. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was. I got but actually, I'm no one to throw to. Yeah, I I like the Ravens pick. Is what you're saying? Did mm-hmm. you? Did you like? Yeah. Bateman? I do like it. Well, they had two picks. They picked a lot. Well, of yeah, I, I like their first pick a lot. I like their second pick too. Um, I just think he has a lot of growing up to do. Um, like football wise, yeah, not, not off the field. Um, just football wise, I think. But if you're going to play defense and you want to learn, you better. <laughs> Baltimore's a good yeah. place to go learn. Um, and teach him. I do like Rashad Bateman. Is it a lot better than the, than the Rashad Perriman pick? Well, <laughs> I've always, I always told you that one when they drafted Rashad Perriman. It was a terrible pick. So I, I do like uh, Bateman. I just. I mean, you can't expect him to come in and be a number one, like, right away. I mean, he might be. Him, Justin Jefferson was, but I just don't think he's the talent level of Justin Jefferson. Yeah. They have Sammy Watkins there to mentor him. You yeah. never know. I, the veteran receiver there. I like Rashad Bateman. I was actually going to no, save like this to the like because I didn't have any complaints about it. If I had complaints mm-hmm. about it, I probably would have led the show with it. Um, no, but I, 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 I like told it. you, I'm, I'm wearing my Maryland shirt for a reason. Yeah. I, I was going to wear a Raven shirt, but I, you know, it's still the same <laughs> associated. Um, yeah. Probably would have made more sense. People are like, what mm-hmm. are you wearing? No, but I, I, I like Rashad Bateman. I think Mark, I'm, I know I'm saying Mark my words a lot yeah, during this draft, but I think he's going to come in and make an impact that Lamar Jackson needs. If you're looking at what the Ravens need, they need that number one target to come in and a taller receiver, a bigger receiver. It's going to take a couple of years, I think. Yeah, but I think – I think he will be that weapon that Lamar Jackson needs. I mean, the Ravens, I know, I think announced today that they extended Lamar Jackson's yeah. contract option, mm-hmm. which is obvious. But the Ravens should go get Julio Jones. I'm just saying, can we sound but I, on that? No, but I love – we can. But I love the yeah. fact that or I think he will come in and be that impactful player that the Ravens need. I like you, Rashad Bateman. Um, no, I, I have no complaints as a Ravens fan. I was actually really happy I did too. with the pick. Minnesota, they had a good year. He, I yeah. mean, you see the one catch on the sideline that the Ravens like put the eye emojis to the tweet. Yeah, like he can make some. He's athletic. He can make you know? some great plays down the field. He can come and play. It's not like he's going to need to be mm-hmm. the big target coming in. And I like that. I know mm-hmm. that the Ravens have a lot of. That's their thing that they need. They need a number one target. But he, they have Sammy Watkins now who can come in and kind of mm-hmm. take some of the load. And then now they have Bateman who doesn't have to come in and step at least fill all the shoes yeah. of a number one target. I think he'll develop into that number one target. It's and he'll be more imp- he will be more impactful than people are thinking. And you watch, he's going to win rookie of the year. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's a, that might be a little too much. Uh, I think they'll go to a quarterback because it's so highly pressing. I don't think he'll be the best receiver. Or, the draft. Okay. <laughs> I was just being a little overconfident yeah. there. No, but I, I really do think he will make an impact. Rashad Bateman will make an impact coming in to the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he doesn't have those – 100% number one target. But yeah. I, think he can, I think he will step in the role. I think we'll have a bigger rookie season than people are thinking, I believe in you. I no too. I, just, I just think they should go with Julio Jones still. I After mean, June 1st, I don't think I would complain if Julio yeah. Jones came to their favorite. They're saying Julio Jones won't be traded until <laughs> after June 1st. because I, I read an NBC Sports was, article that it's highly unlikely he'll come they to say, the Ravens. They say everything like that. It's just reports come out and you know, it's different. Like, like it was like the 49ers, Mac Jones, Mac Jones, Mac yeah, Jones. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, so, what I've read, I was I reading one the other day. There's other destinations, obviously, or if they keep him now. You know, can you imagine Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Kyle Pitts? I think if, Matt Ryan, if Matt Ryan has a bad year with that weapon or those weapons, we, you need to do I think with Draft and Kyle Pitts, they're getting rid of Julio Jones. Yeah, but could you imagine how, that they didn't, having those three? You know what I'm saying? He would look good in the Ravens Sorry. uniform, but yeah. I mean, and mm-hmm. – yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, the draft concludes and mm-hmm. big news. Can we react to the Aaron Rodgers? Big news coming out of Green Bay. I know you briefly talked about it earlier. Yeah. We won't spend much time on He's this. He's going game. to Denver. We'll wrap it up. Aaron Rodgers, Adam Schefter reporting that Aaron Rodgers does not want to play in Green Bay next mm-hmm. season. I saw a stat the other day. The Packers have drafted one offensive player since 2012, and that's Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely ridiculous. And you yeah. expect the man to – Dude, like, mm-hmm. he's over exceeding your expectations and you don't take care of him. Mm-hmm. I think it's ridiculous the way Green Bay has treated him. What do you think? No, I don't And what do you think about him? What do you think about him announcing that he doesn't want to be there with the GM? Why would you? Counterparting they saying he does. They basically, he basically walked into a room with the GM, like, what, like three or four years ago and was like, hey, like, I think this would be good, this would be good. And the GM ignored him and basically was like, hey, go play football. It's like, shut up mm-hmm. and dribble. But we're as a deeper conversation. But I'm just saying, that's basically different reasons. But yeah, I'm saying that's, that's totally different. No, I'm just saying, like, similar, like, yeah. oh, like, just go shut up and play football. Like, it's not right, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, like, the cornerstone of your franchise, one of the best, most talented quarterbacks to ever do it. You listen to Aaron Rodgers. And then, so, basically, that happened three to four years ago. And then you just don't draft him a weapon. DK Metcalf, obviously, 
everyone was like, go get DK Metcalf when he was in the draft. Uh -huh. they all, yeah, they knew he was going to be great. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, this year they have receivers on the board when the Packers pick come around. They had Elijah Moore who was still on the board, Rondell Moore who's still – like these guys are still on the board, like yeah. going to the second round. And I just – if you've been disrespected that much, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even answer the phone. I would just be like, "Nope, beep, trade me." And I'm telling you, he's going to Denver. I just have. He has to. They pass up on two yeah. quarterbacks. When you have Drew Lock package for Aaron Rodgers that you get to throw to get him. I think. I don't think it's that much. A disgruntled quarterback. I think it's not going to be as much as you think. I mean, if I was Green Bay, I would hold out for something. You have yeah, the most but, talented quarterback in over the past twenty years. Yeah, I think if he doesn't want to be there. The trade, well, yeah, the the trade value goes down. You know, He's like, I don't want to be yeah, but here. the organization still has to prove – or still oh, yeah. has to handle the dealings. It's not yeah, like it's – I mean, we've seen Deshaun Watson be like, oh, I don't want to be – He's still in Houston, obviously. Well, for other reasons. Obviously, <laughs> facing some other <laughs> allegations. Yeah. The organization still has to give that green light to Aaron Rodgers. True. I think – Or you could just not show up. That too. That's your choice. I think they've absolutely disrespected Aaron Rodgers. And I know I've been saying this all season mm -hmm. long, and y'all have not listened to me on this channel – I I've been, I think so. they've been sound. I've I've been sounding off on this. Yeah. All probably since I've joined the channel, I, what a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. He has been absolutely disrespected. How can you draft one offensive player since 2012, and that's the, a quarterback in the same position as Aaron Rodgers? You don't even give him yeah. a receiver for help. You don't even give him a lineman to protect him. I think. I mean, obviously they brought other players in and developed mm -hmm. other players in later rounds, but I think. It's absolutely ridiculous that you will not help this man who honestly is a generational talent. And he's one and four in the NFC Championship. Games. Yeah, but you don't help him. How do you expect – other teams are going out and getting these big players. Justin Jefferson last year wins Rookie of the Year in the division. Well, he wasn't but, on the board when the Packers – Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm comparing. <laughs> I'm saying over the years. I know Aaron Rodgers never gives you a high draft pick because mm -hmm. of how talented he is with nothing around him. But, I, I mean, I think last year he had, finally had a running back to play. But I think he has more than you think. But I think, yeah, but you never spend a first round pick to say, hey, Aaron, we're going to come help you and no, make you, and, you know, that's, that's why I, I know Justin Jefferson was in on the board. I'm just, I was comparing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of other notable first round picks yeah. besides quarterbacks that have come in and made an effort or an impact right away. Mm -hmm. And even if you draft up one year and be like, Aaron, we're going to invest in you this season. We're mm -hmm. going to get you a premier running back or wide receiver. If I was Aaron Rodgers, I would have left months ago i would have been like okay bye he's trying it's not his choice yeah well i'm, I'm saying, saying no uh, I, I don't think green bay's handling things right i'm just saying i think Aaron Rodgers is a little overrated yeah. when, it, when it, i think he's one he's talented but he's oh his stats uh, you make me kick you no, off the show his stats and his playoff clutchness if you want to say is not great this is a pro Aaron Rodgers show. I don't it's know why. not great. I don't know why they kicked that. he's like james harden yeah but why did they kick that field goal i wouldn't have kicked the damn field goal yeah but also he had like eight yards to run into the end zone. And okay, you're not going to make the best decision on every play, but you should have given – you have a top five quarterback, you know if not a top I'm not saying two or three quarterback man. with Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. And you're I think saying, Patrick Mahomes is miles ahead of him. Well, that's why I said – Well, I'm just I, that's, I didn't say one. I mean, the, I, there's arguments. But I think it's yeah. – I would rate him as probably the second best quarterback currently in the NFL, talent-wise. I'm not saying resume-wise. I want it. And I think that you have – Justin Fields will climb the board after a few years. I think but I, I would I if mean, Deshaun Watson wasn't in trouble, yeah, I would take think, Deshaun Watson but I think you have a quarterback, a But you – okay, what I'm saying. If you're, no, I'm talking about for a season, yeah. too. I'm not talking like – because, you know, like Deshaun Watson's a lot younger. Yeah. I'm saying if Deshaun Watson wasn't in trouble and you put Deshaun Watson on the Packers – I would put Aaron Rodgers over Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. But you put Aaron Rodgers – you have Aaron Rodgers – okay, let's argue for, yeah. hypoth or for consensus reasons, yeah. the top five quarterback. In the, oh, yeah. in the NFL, under yeah. center, and on fourth down, you're kicking the ball? When you have Tom Brady on the other sideline? No, I'm not saying he made the right decision. I'm also saying Aaron Rodgers didn't make the right decision. Also, Aaron Rodgers had three drives down a possession yeah, he brought in the, the third, back. end of the third and fourth quarter. He had three drives. He had, what, two three and outs? Or maybe, I know one was a three and out, one was another punt, and then one was the field goal, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, he had three shots, man. It's not like you – I think it's ridiculous, and I'm, this is a pro Aaron Rodgers show. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's I one think, and four in NFC Championship games. Maybe when you're going in with less talent than the other team, I mean, if you face less who, talent, who was more talented, the Buccaneers? Who had more weapons, the Buccaneers or the Packers? Mm, yeah. I would say the Buccaneers overall. But anyway, I think Devontae Adams is the best receiver out of all of them. 
Well, I'm, I'm saying more of they a – They also have the best running back. But I'm saying more of a across the board. Tom Brady had a lot of weapons. Tom Brady had three interceptions in that game. I don't want to I right. think – He wasn't great. I'm not making it – okay, I'm not – okay, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on Tom Brady. I don't want to sound – I'm just saying I think overall offensively he had more talent than Aaron Rodgers did. I, I think it's pretty obvious. Well, I don't yeah. think it's an argument. Yeah, but I still I, don't think it's – Obviously like, Tom Brady – Miles. Seven like, Super Bowls. You can't really argue against him. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap up with the show. We're getting off topic here. It's so sweet about the draft. Obviously, big news struck yesterday. Get out of here, Aaron. Go ahead and follow yeah. us at In the Front Row LA for more topics like this and tell us what you want to talk about. Go Wizards. Also, hey, big win. They're, They're right the there. Playoffs. I wouldn't want to face the Wizards. Also, go no. ahead and subscribe down below. We'll be talking the NFL playoffs and, you know, Hopefully the Wizards will do something in the Eastern Conference. Woo! Uh, go the Nets in the first <laughs> we'll, round. We'll, we'll see you next time. Wanna find me, Joe? I'm in the front row. Yeah. Uh, two tickets on me. I'm in the front row. The best place to be. I'm in the front row. Uh, uh, place uh -huh, to be. Uh -huh. So what's colder than ice and even hotter than a flame? I be in the front row, chilling out.